Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the term structure of interest rates. So what is this term? What does it mean? What's the term structure of interest rate? It means the relationship between time to maturity and yield and interest rate. So basically what we're doing on the x-axis we're going to put time to maturity and on the y-axis we are going to put an interest rate and for example we could put any interest rate but specifically we will be using debt securities like US Treasury bonds once again it doesn't have to be this but usually that's the indicator of the movement of interest rate in the long run so this rate could apply to risk-free zero coupon bond meaning that rates are pure and not influenced by credit or coupon payment now why do we do that because we want to factor the risk out what does that mean? It means when we use the risk-free rate, assuming we use the U.S. Treasury bond as a risk-free rate, if we're using that to graph the term structure, we are factoring out any risk. So simply put, let's assume we have U.S. Treasury bond. For one year, it's paying, let's assume, 2%. If you want two years, it's paying 3%. For three years, it's paying... 4%. I'm making it linear, but it, does, it doesn't have to be linear. One, two, three years. So what does that mean? If we look at this, we can graph this and see that there's an upward slope. Now, why are we doing so? We want to see what's happening to the expected inflation. If this is a risk-free investment, it means there's no default. So what's making the difference between year one and year two is time. And since there's no risk, what's being factored? It must be inflation. So what we're saying here is, as time goes by and the U.S. government is trying to buy U.S. Treasury bond, they have to pay more in interest rate. Well, why? If it's a default, it's if, the, if there's no default, if it's risk-free, well, it must be inflation. Essentially, this term structure tells us the market expectation for future interest rate and economic condition over time. Now I'm saying inflation. Well, what, what comes with inflation? Growth. It means there's a growth in the future because if you're demanding more of return, it means there's more growth. And this is what we will discuss in this session, the meaning and the usage of the term structure of interest rate. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our corporate finance course is best for online students and students who are taking corporate finance courses. We cover financial statements, discounted cash flow, stock valuation, bond valuation, NPV and capital investment decisions, cost of capital, risk and return, as well as other topics. Our course include lectures as well as multiple choice questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. No obligation. We are here to help. Your success starts here. What shapes could this term structure or yield curve take? Well, it can take three forms. It can take an upward sloping. An upward sloping means what? It means, as I just showed you in the introduction, something like this an upward sloping and this this is usually we call the norm it doesn't have to be perfect could be like something like this it doesn't have to be perfect it could take downward sloping something like this and this is not the normal one this is called inverted so when would that happen it would happen when short-term rates are higher than long-term rates and we'll explain these two shapes shortly and it could be humped rates could be rising and falling something like this forming a hump now as I told you for the interest we could use usually we would use the US Treasury bond the 30-year US Treasury bond we could look at US securities or the risk-free rate some sort of a risk-free rate to graph this however I want you to understand what composed of an interest rate when an interest rate is quoted a nominal interest rate now let's understand the components the main components shaping the yield curve and this will help us also understand the component of interest so when when an interest rate is quoted there are three components within that interest rate but here we're going to see the three component but we're looking at how they shape the yield curve the first component when an interest rate is quoted is the real rate when you quote an interest rate for a lender 
Well, the lender wants to earn a, a real rate. This is the rate that the investor require for deferring consumption after adjusted for inflation. So this real rate is exactly how much they want to earn. It reflects the pure time value of money and depend on economic growth and expectation. If future growth is higher, if you think we're going to have economic prosperity, you want to earn a higher return. Why? Because a higher real return, a real rate of return, because you want to take advantage, you want to enjoy this growth. Now, this real rate will have a relatively small effect on the shape of the yield curve relative to inflation and risk premium. And the reason is because it stays relatively constant across different maturities. If somebody wants to earn 8% real return, they always want to earn 8%. That's their required rate of return by the investor. So we're gonna assume it's relatively stable relative to inflation and risk premium. So if somebody wants to invest, they would say, I want to earn 8% real return, then they will add the inflation, the inflation rate, the inflation compensation. Investors expect compensation for the loss of purchasing power due to future inflation. So if 8% is my, re I want to earn exactly 8%, and I expect inflation to be 3%, now what I want to demand is 11%. So if inflation is expected to rise, longer terms rate will be higher, resulting in an upward sloping, upward sloping curve. And the more you expect inflation to be into the future, the more you would require to compensate for that inflation. So if you, you, if you think inflation will be 6% or 5%, you want to add that rate because the down the road, you don't want to lose the purchasing power. Now, if you don't know how inflation work with interest rate, I have a whole recording about this in the prior session. However, if inflation expected to decline, long-term rates might be lower. And we'll explain this once we look at the down sloping curve, producing a down, downward slope. Now, in addition to that, when you invest, you want to be compensated also for the risk premium that you are taking. Generally speaking, I mean, risk premium, you could, you could, you could make, you, it could take many, uh, many, uh, many format. You could say, well, this is a risky investment. This is a risky industry. This is a risky company. And you can add risk premium to that. But also, just for, for the time that you are giving, the more time you have to wait to get your money back, the more unknown, the more you would add in risk premium. So longer term bonds are riskier because their prices fluctuate more as interest rate changes because you cannot predict what's going to happen three years from now. You could predict three months or six months, but you cannot predict six years. The longer you have to wait for your money, the more you are subject to risk. And the more you are subject to risk, the more you want to be compensated for that risk. For, for that risk, you would say my risk premium is 4%. I'm just trying, I'm just making up these numbers. Therefore, eight plus five is 13 plus four is 17. Now the nominal should be 17. Again, this is just to kind of show you how, how interest rate is composed. Investors demand higher yield for compensation for added risk, for any risk. Time by itself is risk. The longer you wait, have to wait for your money, the more, the more risk you will face. But risk can take many forms, many, many forms. So the risk premium tend to grow with maturity, but at a, at a decreasing rate. And, you know, as, as you wait longer, you have to take, you take more risk, but it's not the same, you know, maybe 10, 12 years are similar, 15 to 15 to 18 years are similar, so on and so forth. So those three components shape the yield curve. What should you do now? Whether you are an accounting student, a finance, CPA, CMA, CFA, go to farhatlectures.com, look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, that will help you succeed in your courses, pass your professional certification. The best investment you can make is invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.